is one of the greatest medical scandals of the century, according to a leading health expert in Brussels. The Council of Europe Health's chief has accused major pharmaceutical firms of organizing a campaign of panic and unduly influencing World Health Organization decisions. And with European countries now burdened with bills for millions of unwanted doses of the swine flu vaccine, he wants an investigation. Our science correspondent Tom Clark has this report. The predictions for the impact of swine flu on Britain were grim. The government's response, spending hundreds of millions of pounds on antiviral drugs and vaccines, adverts and leaflets. Were governments misled into preparing for the worst? Politicians in Brussels are now asking for an investigation into the role pharmaceutical companies played in influencing political decisions that led to a swine flu spending spree. There must be a process to, to get more transparency how the decisions in the, in the WHO, how they function and who is influencing the decisions of the WHO and what is the role of the pharmaceutical industry there. I'm very suspicious about the processes which are behind this uh, pandemic. The Council of Europe Committee want the investigation to focus on the World Health Organization's decision to lower the threshold required for a pandemic to be formally declared. The world is now at the start of the 2009 influenza pandemic. When this happened in June last year, governments had to activate huge pre-prepared contracts for drugs and vaccines with manufacturers. They also want to probe ties between key WHO advisors and drug companies. Who is deciding what the risk is? Is it the pharmaceutical companies who want to sell drugs? Or is it someone making a decision based on the perceived danger? In this case, it appears that the danger was vastly exaggerated. And was it exaggerated by the pharmaceutical companies in order to make money? Citing commercial confidentiality, the Department of Health won't actually tell us how much swine flu vaccine they actually ordered. But it's thought contracts were signed for 90 million doses. Yet fewer than 4 million people in the UK have actually had the jab. Officials here are now in negotiation with their key supplier, GlaxoSmithKline, to see if they can't rewrite that very expensive contract. Britain is now trying to cancel orders for 60 million doses of the jab, but we're not the only country awash with vaccine. France ordered 94 million doses. It's now trying to cancel contracts for 50 million of those. Germany is trying to cancel orders for 25 million doses and the Netherlands has announced it will sell 19 million of the 34 million vaccines it ordered. Last month, an investigation by Channel 4 News raised serious questions about the government's decision to order millions of doses of the drug Tamiflu and the possibility of pharmaceutical industry influence on decision making. Head of Health at the Council of Europe says they got it wrong. Not only that, they were misled by the World Health Organization and unduly influenced by drug companies. WHO, in cooperation with some big pharmaceutical companies and their scientists, redefined pandemics and lowered the alarm threshold. Those new standards forced politicians in most states to react immediately and sign marketing commitments for additional and new vaccines against swine flu and spend billions of dollars to catch up. Never before the search for traces of a virus was carried out so broadly and intensively. Besides, many cases of death that happened to coincide with seropositive H1N1 lab findings were simply attributed to swine flu and used to foster fear.